Welcome to your second session of your second semester. Uh, basic numeracy session, facilitation session. Please remember to complete the register. I've just posted the link in the chat. And always remember if you have any technical issues, you need to send an email to CT and Tat at unisa.ac.za. And if you have any content related to your BNU or QMI module, send a <clears throat> Send an email to eboyem at junisa.ac.za and cccct and tat at junisa.ac.za so that they have some visibility in terms of the queries that we receive. Okay, so today's session, we are going to look at ratios and proportions. And the last week of August, which will be next week, Monday, <clears throat> same time, we're going to look at differentiation. Um, are you all doing B and QMI? Or are you doing B and U? Are you doing B and U or QMI? BNU, both of you. Okay, then I will have to change the schedule because differentiation is mostly for QMI and I don't want to cover something that you guys don't do. So we'll have to find another topic uh, <clears throat> that we will do on Monday because the QMI students are not here. I must just apologize. I had, I'm just recovering from um, hay fever and flu. So my voice is still husky and I'm going to be clearing my throat so often as well as we go along. <clears throat> uh, are there any questions, comments before we start with today's session? Any query? Nope. Okay. And then it's fine. Then we can just start with today's session. Like I said, today's session, we're going to be looking at ratios and proportion. They are interlinked. Um, and we are going to also maybe at some if we have enough time, we will look at percentages, how we calculate percentages. And then I had some little bit of other concepts that I wanted to include in the uh, in the session as well, but they were more relating to QMI than to BNU. So since there are no BNU student or QMI students, so I'm not gonna cover that section. So we're only gonna do <clears throat> ratios and proportion and a little bit of percentages as well. <clears throat> so a ratio is a value that we use to compare things. <clears throat> so if we want to compare two or more numbers, we use a ratio. And especially if we want to create a new something new, they sometimes you need to balance things, right? For example, you know, you all know uh, oros. Um, in order for you to take the concentrated oros and make nice juice, they always tell you that it's one part orange to four parts water in order for you to make a perfect drink, right? So that is the ratio, the ratio of taking the concentrated um, uh, product and uh, adding the uh, the four parts of water to it to make a nice juice. And that's the other way of using ratios as well. So we're going to compare 
um, the differences between the two numbers as well. And also it uh, with the ratios, you try to highlight certain things. If there are more of them than the other, you are able to use the ratios to highlight those things. And a ratio, we always denote it by one is to four, or you can write it as one over four, or one out of four. So with the ratio, because you're finding a ratio of this value to another value, the difference is with the two. Uh, it's almost works like a fraction. And the two tells you whether which what which value will be at the top and which value will be at the bottom, or which value will be on the left and which value will be on the right of the dot. So <clears throat> yeah, if we say one is to two, uh, sorry, one is to four, then it means we find in the ratio of one to a four. So this is very important. The two tells me that the one will be at the top. If this is a fraction, it will be one over four or one out of four. We'll, we can write it as a fraction. So the one will be at the top, the four will be at the bottom, or the one will be on the left and the four will be on the right because of this two. So the two is very important. It tells you how you're going to set it up. <clears throat> so let's look at an example. A company hired six females and 24 males. What is the ratio of females to males? There again, our important letter, two letter width, two females two males so in this instance they are telling us we want to find the ratio of females to males so we can write it in this manner or you can write it as females is to male or you can write it as females out of males and that will give us the ratio of females to males but we need to be able to write it in number because they have given us the actual numbers so let's <clears throat> let's do that this <clears throat> So we know that we have, we are given six females to 24 males. And we can simplify it even further by writing it in a fraction format to say six divided by 24. And it gives us one over four, which means there is one females to four males. One is to four. And in terms of ratio, we say it, the ratio is one to four males. One females to four males. Or we can even simplify it further because if we want to know how many females, if for every one male that they hire, how many more females do they hire? They hire actually 0 0.25 females for every male that they hire in this company. If I'm working at this company, I will know that if there were more females and if there were females and males coming into the interview, the chances of a female being selected will be 0 0.25 as compared to for a male, which will be 100%. So we know that 25% of the time they will select a female, by 100% of the time they will select a male. So we can use also the ratios to calculate proportion because like I said, in order for us to balance out things or make things equal, we can use the ratios, but ratios alone don't give you that much. <clears throat> Therefore, we can use proportions to make things equal. So what are the proportion? A proportion 
is a statement that gives you two equal ratios, right? So let's look at this example. If we have Peter and Gray selling veggie soup for the total profit of 50,000 for their shop, they need to share the profit according to the ratio of number of soup they've sold. Peter sold only 15 and Grace sold 32 soups. How much should each receive? In order for us to pay them according to the amount of work that they put in, we need to split the, ratio, the, the profit equally against the ratio of the number of products that they have sold. So Peter sold 15, so they cannot split this 50-50 because someone sold more products than the other. So Grace sold more products, so Grace should be getting more profit. In order for us to determine how much profit each one of them should get, we need to calculate the ratio of each of um, their products sold and then multiply that ratio to the profit and that will give us the amount. So for both of them, we need to also calculate the total because the, it will be the ratio that we'll be calculating will be the ratio of the total of both of what they have sold. So we need to say 15 plus 32, which is equals to 7, 47. So they have sold 47 products or 47 soups, right? So we know that in total, they have sold 47 soups. So we need to calculate the ratio of Peter's so that we can calculate how much Peter will receive. So Peter sold 15, so the ratio of Peter will be 15 out of 47. Multiply that with the profit that they have made as a team, and that would give us how much would Peter receive. And we can also, from here, because if we have the ratio of one, we don't have to calculate the ratio of the other. We can take 50,000 minus 15,957. And that will give us how much should Grace receive. But because we're working with the ratios, we're just going to calculate the ratio. So let's calculate the ratio for Grace. <laughs> so the ratio for Grace will be 32 products because she sold 32 products out of 47. So it's 32 to 47. Multiply that with the 50,000. And that gives us. 34,000. If you add both of them, they should give you 50,000. There will be some little bit of marginal error that I have. I didn't take into consideration because I rounded off some of the values. So let's see. They, it should give us 50,000 if we combine both of them. Uh, I'm missing one rand. So 34,000. 042 plus 15,957. Yeah, I'm missing one rent. So, some way, let's see 15 divided by 47 equals 0 0.31. Multiply that by 50,000. And the answer is, I think. I should have 0.44 somewhere there. 0.45. It should be 0.45. <clears throat> because when you round off the money, you are going to drop off some decimals. And the same happens. 32 divided by 47 equals. Multiply the answer by 50,000. And the answer will be point 
five five. So I could have just made this thirty four thousand zero point four three because it's fifty five cent. And then I wouldn't be missing that one rent. So, but that's how you will calculate the proportions. But because I dropped the decimals, that's why I don't get 50,000. I'm missing my one run. But if I kept my decimals and I rounded off correctly, I should have for Grace, we'll get 34,043 rent. That's how the proportions work. Let's look at more examples. <clears throat> Mary buys a box of 48 Fritos Zimba chips for 58 rand at Giants. She sells two packets of Fritos Zimba chips for five rand on a tray. How much profit will she make? Now, <clears throat> the first thing we need to recognize from here is that a box has 48 Fritos Zimba chips and they bought it. So this is the cost. So the cost is 58 rand. That's what they sell. Um, she bought for. She sells two packets for five rand. So it means two for five rand, right? That's how much she sells the Zimbas. The question is, we need to calculate profit. What is profit? Profit is your revenue, which is your sales minus your cost. So it means from the 48 chips that she has in the box, if she sells all 48 chips, how much revenue will she be bringing? It will be because she sells two for five rand, so one. So therefore it means one is equivalent to two rand 50. So we can say two rand 50 times 48, and it will give us the revenue and we subtract the cost. That's how easy it would be in order for us to find the answer. So then let's, let's do that. Let's first find the ratio of two rand to five rand. And the ratio of two rand to five rand is one is to two rand 50. And that's what I just said. That's how you will find the ratio. So one packet is equivalent to two rand 50 cent. Taking the ratio and multiply the two rand 50 cent multiply by the number of packet of chips that they uh, she has she makes a revenue of 120 so the sale is 120 we need to take away the cost that is how much she bought this packet of zimba for she bought it 58 rand so we're going to minus from 120 which is our revenue, which is our sale. We're going to minus the cost of 58 rand. So 120 minus 58 gives us 62 rand. So she makes profit of 62 rand and she can go and buy two more boxes now of, with the amount of money that she has made. She can now afford to go buy two, which will create more and more and more and more and that's business the other way of using ratios when the question looks like this and they ask you how much profit and you can say we know the ratio of the <clears throat> packet to the amount or the say so we know that two packet is sold for five rand. So the ratio of two to five rand is the same as we know that there are 48 uh, uh, fritos in the box, but how much are we selling them for? We don't know how much they would give us. So that is our 
x amount that we don't know. So we can calculate our x, we can calculate the total amount of that. So crisscrossing, 2 will multiply with x and 5 will multiply with 48. Then you will have 2 times <clears throat> x is equal to 5 times 48. And we simplify this. Uh, 5 times 48 divided by 2 because we need to get rid of 2. We're going to divide by 2 and we make x the subject of the formula. And 5 times 48 is 240 divided by 2. It's 120. So we know how much the 48 will make 120. But that is not what the question is asking. The question was asking us how much profit. Then we do the same. Profit minus revenue. Profit is equal to revenue minus cost. 120 minus the cost of 58 rand would give us 62 rand. And that's how you can use the ratios to answer questions when asked. This is your exercise. I'm going to do one with you, and then I'm going to give you time to do the other exercise. I've got a lot of them. <clears throat> a certain school has 1,800 learners. The ratio of the number of boys in the school to the number of girls is 4 is to 5, respectively. How many girls are there in the school? We need to go back and read the question and make sure that we understand what we are given. A certain school has 1,800, so these are total, total learners within the school. The ratio of boys in the school to, there is my other indicator. So here I have boys to the number of girls. And they're telling us that it's five is to four. So there are five in this school, five boys to four girls, right? That in terms of ratio, respectively. How many girls are there in the school? So we need to find out how many girls do we have in the school? So if we take this ratio and assume that this is our the no how many number of girls we have. So we can combine the two ratios and create a total of nine in terms of ratios. So this is the ratio total, right? So we'll have nine, we have nine, but we can calculate the ratio of girls to the total ratio, right? To the total ratio that we are given now that we just created so we know the total the ratio of girls so we need to oh sorry not not what i'm writing here uh, the ratio of girls to total so how many girls do we have we have four out of nine then we can apply the proportion Multiply that with the total number of learners we have in this school. And that will give us the number of girls we have in the school. So in order for us to find the number of girls, we need to calculate the ratio of girls to the total ratio, which the total ratio will be combining the ratio of boys and girls, which gives us nine, dividing the ratio of girls, which we know that it's four is to the total. So four will be out of nine. Multiply that with 1,800. And the answer we get, four is to nine, multiply by 1,800. And the answer is we have 800 girls in the school. Therefore, it means we have 1,000 boys in the school. 
<clears throat> and that's how we calculate the ratios. Are there any questions? If there are no questions, I'm going to give you an exercise which looks almost exactly the same. Let's see. But then, okay, we'll do this one also together to some extent. Or maybe I should give you a few minutes to, to see if you can get it. So the profit of 436,500 of a company is shared between three partners, A, B, and C, in the ratio of three is to two is to four. How much? Is partner C going to receive from this? Remember, it's almost exactly the same. So if you think about this, how much is partner C is the same as how many girls are there in the 1,000? How much they will receive in terms of the amount? So I'm just going to give you time. You can start now. It seems like you all got the same answer. Let's, let's see. So we need to add the total 
of the ratio, so they are three plus two plus four, which is nine. So C is four, so it will be, for C, it will be four over nine. Multiply that with a total profit of 436,000. 500. And when you calculate that, you get 4 divided by 9 equals, multiply the answer by 436,500. You will get the answer of 194,000. Easy, right? So sometimes ratios you get them even when you calculate measurements as well simplify the ratio of 250 centimeter to 15 meters now you must pay attention to what you are given in terms of units we did this last time <clears throat> so you need to at least convert one to the other so are you converting from centimeters to meters or meters to centimeters? So let's assume that we're converting the meters to centimeters and working with centimeters because they didn't tell us in terms of the ratios, which units you can choose, whichever. So we're going to choose 15 meters, convert that to centimeters. So let's do the unit conversion. Do you still remember that? So meters to centimeters. So we have 15 meters. We want to convert that to centimeters. So you need to multiply by the number of tens. Remember? So to convert from 15 meters, we multiply by 100, which then means we're going to have 250 centimeters to 1,500 centimeters equals one meter is equals to 100 centimeters. So we're going to multiply meters by centimeters to get it. Two centimeters. Oh. Now, what is the ratio? The ratio will be 250 <clears throat> divided by 1,500. Can 250 go into 1,500? It goes how many times? It goes six times. So the answer here will be one over, one over six, and therefore it will be the same as one is two, six. And you can see that some of them, they hint in the same direction, but pay attention to the two, which one comes first. So the 250 is the smallest to the 1,500. So you need to pay attention to that. So our answer will be G. Don't choose that one. <clears throat> Another exercise relating to ratios. A picture is 60 centimeter wide and one meter long. So also pay attention to the units. The ratio of its width to the length in the simplest form would be. 
So it means we need to change from centimeters. Now we're moving from centimeters to meters. So since we have centimeters on the left, we're going to keep the centimeters. We're going to just change our meters. So let's convert meters. So we're going to convert from meters to centimeters. So we have one meter is equivalent to 100 centimeters. I, we said we did it the previous time. One meter is equivalent to 100 centimeters. So we just multiply with the number of pens. So we'll have 60 centimeters to 100 centimeters. Therefore, it's the same as 60 divide by 100. Are there any values that can divide into 60 and divide into 100? I think 20 can, right? 20 goes how many times into 60? And he goes three times into what other number can go into sixty and go into hundred? Or we can leave it as as it is or not. Sixty and zero cancels out. We are left with six is to ten. And that's the lowest that it can go because if I look at all this, <clears throat> there is no other number that will give us six and will give us 10. So six is to 10 will be the lowest simplification of this. And we can rewrite it. Therefore, we can rewrite it as six is to 10. Which one looks like that? Is number. Two. That will be the ratio of its width to the length in the simplest form. So there are other um, ratio calculations. I'm not going to do all of them. So I'm just going to give you a time can take a screenshot of them so that we can move to percentages. Otherwise, no, we don't even have to rush. Let's do this one because I think we have one more exercise and then we go and do the percentages and then we are done. A school has 30 teachers. If the ratio of the number of female teachers to the number of males at the school is three is to two, how many male teachers are there at the school? Eighteen. Okay. Well, it says the answer is eighteen. Let's see the ratio of males. So we know that we have the total of thirty teachers, and the ratio of females to females to males, which is three, two, two. And we know that the total of the ratio will be five. So 
So in order for us to find how many males, we're going to find the ratio of males, which is two males out of five. Multiply that with the number of teachers, which they are 30. And that will give us Two divided by five multiplied by thirty. Multiply by thirty. Is twelve. And let's see if you did go and fix Juliet, unless I am reading your previous question the answer should be 12 because there are the ratio of males females to males is three is to two so there is two males to total of five which will give us the proportion of two over five times 30 is 12. so there will be 12 males there should be more females because you can see if you if you say there are 18 males then it will not be correct because there are one more female than males in this school the last question a school has 880 people if the ratio of the number of boys to Girls is seven is to four. Always pay attention to two. Two it resembles the same thing as the double dots, right? How many more girls would need to enroll if the school authority wants the ratio of the number of boys to girls to be one is to one? So they want the same number. How many girls and boys should be? How many more girls you will need to enroll in the school? If we want the ratio to be one to one. So first you will need to calculate what is the ratio of females to boys. Right, and calculate how many boy or girls we have in this school. That will give you the number of girls that we have in that school. So in order for boys and girls to be, the ratio to be one to one, how many more girls needs to be enrolled in this school? Let's first calculate the ratio of girls <clears throat> to the total. So, seven plus four is 11. So, therefore, we'll have four out of 11. Multiply that with 808. And that will be four divided by 11. Multiply by 880, and that will give us 320 girls in the school, right? How many boys are there in the school? Remember, these are girls. How many boys are there in the school? Uh, it will be eight, 880 minus 320 should give us the number of boys. So boys, we have 560 boys in the school. Now, how many more girls would you need to enroll if the school authority wants the ratio of the number of boys to girls to be one is to one? 
How many more girls? How many more girls should we be enrolling? Let's see what you have in the chat. 240. Yes, correct. Because if we have 320, so the authorities can just enroll 240 more girls into the school. 240 more girls. Then the ratio will be 240 plus 320 will give you 560 and the ratio will be one is to one if they want to enroll more girls only so they will need 240 girls to make the ratio one is to one <clears throat> so how did i get to 240 you calculate the ratio of girls we know what the number of girls would have been out of the ratio of seven is to four. So there are 560 and 320. And the gap, which is the difference between the number of boys and the number of girls will give you the difference of how many more females or girls you need to enroll to make it a one-to-one. -one. The last, why it's like I, I have more than last question. So this one is truly the last question. You can also do this one uh, on your own. Uh, we've got, okay, we've got 10 minutes to do this. Suppose a school has 962 learners enrolled. The ratio of the number of boys to girls is five is to eight. So we know the total, we know the ratio of boys to girls. So boys to girls is five to eight. So there are eight girls to five boys or five boys to eight girls in this situation. Find the difference. Difference means subtract. So somewhere we will have to subtract. Find the difference between the number of boys and the number of girls enrolled at the school. So we need to find the difference. Okay, so it's easy to do because we can find the, <clears throat> the ratio of boys and the ratio of girls and then subtract the answer of how many number of girls and how many number of boys there are there. So five plus eight, five plus eight is 13. So it will be 13 divided by five for the boys, multiply by 962. And this will be boys, right? So how many boys are there at the school? They are five divided by 13. Multiply by 962. They are 370. 370 boys. And I can find girls. There are nine. I don't have to calculate the ratio because I can just take 962 minus 372, uh, 370. That will give me the number of girls. So 962 minus 370 will give me the number of girls. There are 592 girls. Now, the difference which is what we need. The difference between boys and girls is 592 minus 370. 592 minus 370, which is 222, which is 
there are, because the girls are more, right? There are 222, uh, 222 more girls than boys in the school. And that's how you will. Answer the question when it comes to ratios. That's a correct. Yes, Leslie. Now let's move to the last section, the last part, percentages. I just added percentages <clears throat> to the mix. So a percentage is a fraction of a full part or a half of a part, right? We split the part in different fractions. A fractional part of a hundred is called a percentage and is denoted by the sign percentage. So sometimes if you don't know how to use your calculator, when you see a percentage, you just divide the percentage value by a hundred and it will be a decimal and you can use it to do calculations. For example, like when you see in your questions there where you have 65%, you cannot just write 55 multiply by something and hope to get the answer. You will need to divide this 65 by 100 because 65% is a fractional part of a hundred. It tells you that there are 0 0.65 of that whole part of one. So 65% will be 65 divided by 100, which will be 0, 0,65. We always, in mathematics, we work with decimals than with a percentage. But if you know how to use your calculator, there is on your calculator a percentage sign on most calculators. Let me look at my one. Percentage. Why am I not seeing a percentage sign on this? Oh, they they is. So <clears throat> a percentage, let's say 65%. <clears throat> mine is written in orange. So if I write 65%, I must go and call the shift button because I'm using a cash. You go and find the shift button and you write it, and you will see it will write 65%. And that is 65%. If you know how to use your calculator, you can use the percentage on your calculator, which will be the same as 65 divided by 100. And you can use that percentage to calculate something. So let's say we want to calculate the percentage of a number. When we say a percentage of a number, and off is the same as multiply. So we need to say we need to multiply 65% of something. And sometimes when we apply a 65% of a number, we either use it to mark down or mark up, or we, we do discounts or whatever the other values that you can find in terms of reducing or adding more to the original value. So we use a percentage. So let's look at an example. If we need to find a percentage of 360,000, let's say I'm buying a car and they say, in order for you to buy this car, you need to pay a deposit of 25% of the original purchase price. So how do I calculate the deposit that I need to put on? It is 25% of the 360,000. Um, Divide the 25% by 100, we get 0 0.25 multiplied with 360, you get 90,000. So you need to make a down payment, a down payment of 90,000. If you know how to use your calculator, it will still work the same. You do shift, uh, you say 65. Oh, sorry, I'm still on 65. You say 25 shift percentage and you 
press the multiplication button and then you put the 360,000 and it will give you 90,000. So you just need to know how to use your calculator correctly. Otherwise, if you don't know how to use your calculator, you just divide the percentage by 100, it gets to a percentage, and then you multiply that. Okay, that's easy, straightforward. Sometimes it's not as easy and straightforward like this, but they might give it to you in a question and ask you, example, 35% of students at the university are male. How many male students are there in total of 1,200 student body that we have at this university? It's the same thing. They are asking you, what is 35% of 1,200? You just go and calculate. 35% times 1,200 is 0 0.35 times 1,200, which is equals to 420. What if the follow-up question says, how much more, how, if we want to increase the number of student body by an X amount, how much more students should we register? The university expects 15% increase from those 1,200 next year. They increase the number of students for the following year to increase by 15%. How many students do they expect so that they can make some arrangements? So we need to find the increase amount from the original and add it to the original because they want to know how many students they expect next year to have been registered at the school. So it will be the old one plus the new ones. How many are they? To calculate the percentage increase, so you can use the same formula for increase or decrease. Decrease, it means you will be minusing. Increase, we will be adding. So for per percentage increase, we use the previous value plus the percentage of the previous value because we're adding a certain percentage from the previous value. So our previous value, we know that we, were ex we had 1,200 students. We need to calculate 15% of 1,200, which is the new number of students that we are getting. And 15% of 1,200 is 108 plus the 1,200 gives us 1,308. And that's how you use percentages to answer questions. <clears throat> okay, let's look at more examples. Because sometimes the examples don't just come as straightforward as I give you as examples. So in the exam or in the assignment, you get questions like this. Mr. Singh sells his house for 585,000. The total commission is 6.5% of the selling price for which the broker receives three quarters. And the salesperson receives the rest. The amount that the salesperson receives is how much? So the first thing you need to do is you need to calculate the commission from the selling price. The price is 585. What will be the commission? And then from the commission, we need to calculate what the broker is receiving and what the salesperson is receiving. But we all actually want the salesperson's number. So we can calculate the ratio of and divide that by or multiply that ratio with the total commission. So let's first calculate the commission. What is 6.5 of 585? So we need to find 6.5% of 585,000. That's what we need to find. 0 0.065. 
because this is 6.5. 6.5 divided by 100 will be 0 0.065. <clears throat> Five eight five zero point zero six five times five eight thousand. And the answer is three eight oh two five. That is the amount. Now we're not done because they said. The broker receives three quarters and the salesperson receives the rest. What is a three quarter? A three quarter. So we know that if we have an equal part of four, a three quarter will be three over four, right? <clears throat> that is a three quarter. So if, if the broker receive three quarter so that is the broker therefore it means the salesperson receives one on a one over four of that because a three quarter plus one over four will give me one right if i add them together they will give me one so if i know this i already know my ratio so i can calculate using this so for the salesperson, I will just add, multiply by 38025. And that will give me from the ratio of a salesperson times the amount of commission that they would have made, I will know how much the salesperson will receive. Because the salesperson will receive one out of four, multiply, by 38,025. And it means the salesperson only receives 9,506 rand 25 cents. That's what the salesperson receives. <clears throat> if they were asking you to find the how much the broker receives. So you will just multiply this with 38025. Or you can just subtract 38025 minus 9506, and that will give you how much the broker would receive. And that's how you will use percentages, percentages and ratios to answer questions in the exam or in your assignment. Let's see. Oh, three quarters is 75, yes. And the other one is 25. I could have just used 0 0.25 here. For, a, for the salesperson, three quarters is 75, you are right. Yes, definitely on point. Okay, so... That is the first exercise. Second exercise, let's see if you can get this one. Bargains for you sells a washing machine. I'm going to assume that is 1,300. I'm not sure. It's not clear, but it looks like three. It looks like three. So, Bargains for you sells a washing machine for 1,320, excluding VET, 
remember now, excluding VAT, we assume VAT is 14%. If you pay cash, they offer a discount of 5%. How much will you save if you buy this washing machine in cash? Hmm. So they are selling it, excluding VAT, and we assume that VAT is 14%. Do we add VAT or no VAT? Because they don't say. If you pay cash, they offer a 5% discount. So are we only going to pay the amount based on the 5% or we need to also include VAT? How much will you save if you buy the washing machine in cash? Okay, I can assume from what they're telling us, uh, Bargains is selling the washing machine for this much, excluding VET, so VET is not included in this, so we don't even have to calculate it, even though they're telling us that telling us that we need to assume that VAT is 14%, but it's not included in the price of the washing machine. If you pay cash, they offer a 5% discount. So what will be how much money you would have saved if you buy the washing machine cash? Very tricky, right? Yes, it will be. Okay, here is the catch. It will be correct if we don't include VAT in, in the washing machine. The answer will be that excluding VAT. If you were including VAT, the answer will be that. But because they didn't say that we need to include VET because they told us that they, they are selling it excluding VET. So we're not going to include VET. So the answer is 66. <clears throat> now this one is also the same. They asking excluding VET. So Aziwe wants to buy a microwave. The cost of a microwave is 1,750, excluding VET. We assume that VET is 15%. If he pays cash, the company offers a 5% discount. How much will he save if he buys the microwave cash? And I guess this is the same, do, 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 do. the same challenge. If we include including VAT, that will be the thing. If we exclude him VAT, that will be the amount. So because it will be 1,500 multiplied by 0 0.05. That will give you the discounted amount, which will be the amount that you are saving. If you are including VAT, maybe I should do it this way. 
1750 times 0 0.05 for if you are excluding VAT. If you include in VAT, it will be 1750 plus, we need to also add the VAT, which is 1750 times 0.14. and close the bracket and multiply that with 0 0.05 and that would give you 99.75. But they didn't say it includes VAT, so I'm going to assume that that will be the answer. A school had 1,200 learners in 2017. Oh, sorry, in 2016. In 2017, the enrollment increased by 50%. Determine the number of learners enrolled in 2017. How many learners were enrolled in 2017? Uh, would we get a mark if we calculate the excluded event in the exam? I I don't know, right? Because now I'm assuming because they said they're selling it excluding VAT, then we don't have to include VAT in our calculation. If they would have said including VAT and VAT is this much, then we will calculate the VAT. <clears throat> will include VAT. Okay, so let's see. There were 1,200 in 2016. They increased by 15%. How many more students are there? So we need to find 1,200 1, more students multiplied by 0, 0,15. Fifty percent of one thousand two hundred is one hundred and eight. Determine the number of learners enrolled in twenty seventeen. Okay, we need the number of learners enrolled, so it will be one thousand two hundred plus. 180, which then it means they are 1,380 learners who are enrolled in 2017. And that would be the answer. So we're calculating the increase. I think this is the last exercise. I'm not going to cover the next section. Suppose a the normal price of a certain pair of shoes, excluding VAT, is 450. Assume that the VAT is 15%. The pair of shoes is on sale for a discount of 10%. What does the pair cost? including VAT. There we go. Can you see that? They have included it. So now you need to calculate including VAT. And that is your exercise.
Are we winning? B says it's 472, option two. Let's see if it's option two or 472. Someone said option two and then the other answer is 472. Okay, let's see. So <clears throat> in order for us to calculate the cost, so what does the cost of the shoe is including but to calculate that, we're going to take our original price of 450 and we're going to add the VAT, right? Because this 450 exclude VAT and we know that the question is asking us to calculate the cost including VAT. We are told what VAT is, so we're going to add 450 times our VAT of 0, 0,15 and they are also telling you that you get a discount of 10% right. which is a little bit tricky there because the year we not asked to calculate the discount but to calculate the actual cost so how much will the actual cost be? So we know that suppose the price of a pair of shoes is 450, assume that VAT is 15%. The pair is on sale for a discount of 10%. What does the shoe cost on sale? Okay, so we want the cost on sale. Okay, so first we calculate the VAT. We include the VAT. So what will be the cost? Including, including VAT. That's the first thing that we can calculate, which is easy to do. We just say 450 plus into bracket, 450 again multiply by the VAT, which is 0.15. And that gives us the cost of the shoe, including VAT, will be 517.50. Now, we know that it's on sale. So what is the cost on sale? This <clears throat> will be 517.50 multiplied by, or oh, we need to do a decrease. Sorry, we need to do a decrease. So let's do this. 517.50 minus, we need to take out the discount, which is minus 517.50 multiply by 0 0.10 discount. And that will give us the actual cost of the shoe. So 517.5 minus into bracket 517.5 times 0.1. And that gives us the cost of the sale on uh, of the shoe on sale will be 465.75. That will be the cost. On state. I have another question. Last, last one. I have the last one. So the price of a financial calculator is 645 without a value added tax of 14%. What does the calculator cost if VET is included?
six is seven hundred and thirty five and eight, which is option four. So let's see if it's option four. <clears throat> the price of a financial calculator is six forty five with five. Perfect. So how much is the calculator cost? So cost it will be. 645 times 0.14. But we need to add, because this is the value, the value added tax, we need to add it back to the 645. And that will be equals to point. 0.14 times 6.45 is 90.3 plus 6.45, which then gives us 6.45. It gives us 735 rand. And thirty cents. Are there any questions, comments, queries? Any comments? If there are no comments or questions, then we can summarize and conclude. Like I said, I'm going to change what we are busy with so that it aligns to the BNU sessions. So we're going to look at fractions, but not just fractions, variables, how to find or how to calculate fractions where you are given variables and how do we find the LCMs and so on. So that's our next session on the 29th. Unless if there is a pressing, pressing other topic that you feel you need assistance with up to so far, um, because I checked on um, on 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 the schedule thing to look at the recordings. They haven't uploaded the recordings from the previous years. Oh, not the previous year, but the previous semester. So therefore, it means you guys will not have access to those recordings unless if you go via the channel I shared with you. Um. Because I didn't want to repeat the same content, but since I see that the, the QMI students are not part of the discussions, so we'll continue with more related beard news sessions. Um, I will change all the schedules so that then we focus on your area. But please, if there are any burning issues or burning questions that you or or topics that you want me to address through the sessions, we only have one month, right? In September then, because then your exam starts. So let me know which topics are banning, question, are banning topics for you, which, which chapters are giving you hard times. So we concentrate more on those ones. And then I adjust the schedule a little bit. Um, you can send me a WhatsApp or you can send me an email. Just to recap, in today's session, we look at proportions and ratios. Said ratios are the way of comparing two or more numbers together. And remember, it's very important to always keep in mind the two. A ratio of females to 
males, it means males will be at the top, females will, oh, sorry, females to males, females will be at the top, males will be at the bottom in terms of a fraction. So they will be your numerator and your denominator. They don't want to introduce those kind of concepts because we haven't touched the fractions. But you must just remember that with the two, two will mean something will be at the top, the other one will be at the bottom. The one after the two will be at the bottom. The other thing we looked at is calculating the proportion where we make things equal. So always remember when you're given the ratios to add the total of the ratio and use those ratio totals to calculate another new ratio in order for you to find the proportion that you are looking for. And then we also looked at a, a additional thing, which is the frac uh, percentages, where a percentage is a part of a whole. Uh, it's, a hundred, uh, it's a fractional part of a whole, uh, where when you are given a percentage, if you don't know how to use your calculator, you are going to divide it by a hundred. Otherwise, you can use the percentage sign on your calculator. <clears throat> and you to calculate the percentage of, remember that of means multiplication, and you can calculate percentage increase or percentage decrease or mark up, mark down, depending on how they ask you questions. Just read the question carefully. Make sure that you understand what you are given. Highlight the facts that are there in the in the statement and be able to identify the things that you will need to answer the question. And remember, we always apply the problem solving uh, framework that we use. And on that note, thank you for coming through and have a lovely evening. See you next week, Monday. Bye. Is there a way we can start at 7 p.m.? Uh, hey, if we start at 7 p.m., then it means we're going to finish at half past eight. Um, I can check. Uh, uh, if you are on, on the WhatsApp group, we can also continue this conversation on WhatsApp, but I am not sure. I think because I... I assume that we need some rest. If we finish late in the evening, it's very tiring. But we can look at that. Um, the times can always change. Um, okay, so I don't have to add you to the group. You can add yourself to the group. Uh, be a new, right? <laughs> Just hold on, don't leave. Let me just stop the recording and then I will send you the WhatsApp detail on. Yeah.